All right, quickly, I'm Jerry Johnson. Uh, I came here from Los Angeles. Been here 21 years in Ghana. Um, the reason we have African Ancestral Wall is because I was not satisfied uh, with what I was seeing in the school systems. You know, I started out talking to some of the older students, like at the universities. I realized by that time their minds were on getting out of the country and all of that. So this kind of Pan-Africanism and all of the information that we like to share in videos, books, and all of that was not a, that impactful. So I started going to the younger students, especially in the areas out here, and uh, I think that was a little more um, effective effective <laughs> because they haven't quite all drank the Kool-Aid yet, you know? <laughs> but uh, they're giving it to them hard, even at the young ages. So I was going around to a lot of the village schools. I did that for a while, and then it came to my mind that maybe the best thing I could do, uh, most efficient, since I had the space was to put all of these ancestors on the wall and then we take the children on, on field trips and we've been doing that for years and years now had thousands of students through here and you know you're just basically trying to plant that seed you know at least one time exposure and then you never know when one of y'all going to pick them up somewhere later and then give them some more you know so let's uh, do what we can do and you'll see we've been working for five years on and off of course, COVID in the middle of the library and a multi-purpose area down there. We'll show you all of that real quick when we get to the end. So seven different artists, that's why you see different styles. And I chose them based on kind of like what I hope some of the students will internalize as we go through the process. So uh, that's that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, you'll see people you know, so you don't know, and you'll be looking for people you think should be there. But uh, we tried to kind of spread it around at the risk of not putting too many Ghanaians and too many people from the U.S. because, you know, everybody wants to see their favorite Ghanaian uncle. Everybody wants to see their favorite African, quote unquote, American, uh, you know, ancestor. You're the Caribbean person, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, 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 we're spreading it around for sure. All right, so that's that. Now, we'll start unless everybody, anybody got a quick question. We can ask them as we go along. All right. Turn your attention to this way, Apoko Kanyani. This woman was a, from a Frafra or a Bruni speaking woman from the northern part of Ghana. That's where my uh, uh, wife is from. They speak the Gruni language. Uh, my daughter, all of them speak it. I don't still hear too much, so they talk in circles around me. But anyway, Apoko <laughs> Kanyani, she's there because the pestle that she has that they use to uh, pound the millet and pound the, all of these things. She was able to use that to kill the uh, leader of a slave raiding delegation into her village of Bukere. And um, since she was able to kill him and then they injured some of the other ones, that became an inhospitable place to go look for Africans to take anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like we tried the next area, but this area got a bad rip because of her. So um, she's the, they call this the pestle turn to blood and she's a semi-legend figure in the area up there. Uh, Queen T, this is where I introduced the students to the fact that the civilized civilization of ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet during the time of its great flowering and the things that we know it for was a black African civilization. I think the covers are off on all of that. Unfortunately, these children have the same school books that we had, same church, Sunday school stuff that they gave us, which everybody looked like, you know, Charlton Heston or whatever. So we have to uh, begin to reintroduce this fact to them. We talk about Queen T, 18th Dynasty, Queen, very powerful. We have time, we tell a little bit more about uh, Amenhotep III and the rest. Okay, now Marcus Garvey, you see, is in the middle. I hear, I hear different uh, Caribbean accents uh, coursing through the crowd. Um, Marcus Garvey is front and center mainly because I think Marcus Garvey's philosophy is the one that's made the most sense and stands the test of time. Absolutely, until brother. You build any, until, well, I hope this isn't coming to here. Okay. All right. Uh -oh. Y'all a little early. You, you're good. You're, you're good. I'm sorry. Man. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's let's, let's that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Malevna. Okay, he's okay. Boy, I, that gate should have been a little wide. So, uh, to resume, we're talking about Garvey. I said, I feel like that's the, uh, the most feasible, plausible thing for African people because when you really stop and think of it, we have the resource, we have the land, we have the population. 
we have none of that. Uh, whether you're in the Caribbean, you may have some land, some population, but not enough to, to make impact the way we'd like to in terms of power and, and this kind of thing. And of course, American, we don't have the resource population or the, or the land. And the resources we do have, we find out don't belong to us when we're ready to access them. But anyway, uh, Garvey understood you had to build power on the African continent. Strong man is strong everywhere. We can talk more about go. Garvey as we go on. But uh, he said, up you mighty race, you can accomplish what your will allows you to accomplish. Uh, here I have Nkrumah. Uh, most of the students will know Nkrumah because Nkrumah was the founding father of independent Ghana coming out of the colonial times, so I don't have to tell them too much about who he was, but I do have this statement here for more of the teachers and some of the adults coming through because they don't know much about Garvey. So here I say, show what, you know, Nkrumah said, look, I read all the big brain Europeans, but the one that had the biggest impact on me was reading Marcus Garvey's philosophies and opinions. So they have things like the Black Star Square that you've gone to, Black Star Line, all of that. And Black Star uh, Pan-African Community, and, things and, like that. And, and Black Star <laughs> Pan-African, even the Kantenka, you'll see two of these red cars down here made in Ghana, you'll see the star on those. So Marcus Garvey, not and that's in of course other places too, had a big, big impact on Nkrumah and he brought a lot of that with him. So that puts Garvey in some kind of context for people who have never heard of him uh, here in Ghana. Uh, very quickly, the founders of the place we are, we're actually in a place called New Ningo. Uh, New Ningo, uh, Prom Prom is kind of like across the street this way, uh, but the founders of here is Te Jangma, uh, the first is the first chief, and the actual founding person here was a businessman named Jonas Carbo, so we just kind of give him that, that local respect. Leazar. Okay, everywhere, how, how long y'all been in town? That's a great question. Two days. I mean, uh, <laughs> since our uh, Friday, so uh, two days. So most places you go, you're going to hear people say, Afwaba, welcome, welcome. Uh, in the Gruni language, Lea Zare, or just Zare, uh, is welcome. And so that's why you have that here. The flags we have, uh, of course, the Ghanaian flag. We have a Jamaican flag you're going to represent on the other side of the water. And that could easily be Haiti or Guyana or any other place. We'll start switching that around. But you know, Ghanaians, if you be here a long time, you'll see they have a certain affinity, really, just this, especially from the Akan side uh, with the Jamaicans. And then we have Ethiopia's flag because I like to remind them that not every one of our colonies was uh, subdued and colonized by force. Ethiopia hasn't, you know, stood their ground. Then our red, black, and green, which means whatever y'all want it to mean for you. Red is for the blood, green is for the land, and black is for the 